This amusement that I have in my hand <coughs> is known as Martin's Menace. And you, you already heard the story uh, Rob <coughs> mentioned <coughs> yesterday. He read a letter from Martin Gardner that he was given these four pieces in a rectangular box, and he worked on it for a week. And in desperation, he wrote to me for the solution. And the problem is simply to put the four pieces into a rectangular tray. Now, how can anything like that possibly be so difficult? Well, the explanation has almost nothing to do with mathematics, and it all has to do with psychology. We're not going to go into that here. But you're going to get a handout tomorrow with my compendium that goes into that in some detail. But I'll just tell you that, um, well, I'll put it together. And uh, maybe you'll notice that none of the pieces rest comfortably in a corner. Which, and uh, I'll give you another example now that's uh, perhaps even, here's, here's one with five pieces. And uh, the problem is to make room for that little domino in the middle, if the others would please move over and make room for it. And here, here's the solution. I've colored one of the pieces in red. And you'll notice that at just one corner rests on one edge. Who would ever start putting it together with that step? And it's a case where somebody with a background in math or engineering is a disadvantage, I think, in solving something I believe. <laughs> uh, well, we're not going to go into that anymore because I want to talk about something else. And that is, people uh, like me that design these things would like to know that there's only one solution. That's usually one of the design objectives. How do you know that there's only one solution to something like that? Well, you try every possible way. And you think, well, I think there, there probably aren't any. But um, you do it systematically, and you com come to the conclusion there aren't any. But then. There's an unsystematic method where the pieces are tilted at crazy angles. And I don't know any way to, to really solve that mathematically. Now, there are some computer programs like Bill Cutler's that try, and they come up with a very high degree of certainty, but not absolute certainty. And uh, I, I, uh, I don't really know much about them, but I, I do try to defeat them because I believe his depends on a square or rectangular tray. So now I've come up with an elliptical tray, and um, that that's, is even more hopeless. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, the, the point of all this is, well, I'm, I'm going to uh, actually read the, the last part of this here. What is the point of all this? I wonder if it is mathematically possible to exactly determine the number of solutions to problems of this type. Or to put it another way, I wonder if it is possible to prove that it ought to be possible, even though the method is not yet known. Or if it is possible to prove that it is impossible to determine. I would just carry this a step further and ask the same question with regard to mathematical problems in general. Is it possible to prove that a method for arriving at the solution to a problem of this sort must exist even though that method may not yet be known. But it seems now that we've wandered into the realm of square root, uh, beyond the realm of square root type problems and into mathematical logic in general, which is way over my head. I would expect that mathematical logicians much smarter than I have pondered questions like this and perhaps come up with answers. Even possibly some of you at this gathering, uh, even, uh, is it possible to prove that something must be possible to prove even though the proof is not yet known? Yes, I know it sounds self-contradictory, and probably it is. As for myself, I'm not really interested in the answers to these questions. Uh, I can amuse myself enough by just pondering the intriguing mysteries surrounding the mathematical questions of this sort, as I have been enjoying doing all my life. For me, sometimes the questions... Uh, I would, uh, 
Well, I would like to conclude this presentation with two quotations from my book, The Puzzling World of Polyhedral Dissections. And uh, if I can find them. Here's one. He who wonders discovers that this is in itself a wonder. That is by Escher. And here's the other one. The most beautiful thing we can experience is the mysterious. It is the source of all true art and science. That's by Einstein. So here you have two experts, and I happen to agree with them. That's it. Thank you. Thank you.